Hey guys, Jerry Lathrop here with Ride 88, um, sitting here in the shop where we built the racks. And uh, just like to thank you for your purchase of our bike rack. Uh, this video is just going to be a quick video to share with you what you need to know to get set up and a few safety tips to make sure that you get everything put in correctly. So um, yeah, just, a, just wanted to give this video to you guys so that uh, you had a good clear instruction on how to set things up. If you have any questions, make sure you go to our website shoot us an email, we'll be checking it daily and get right back to you and help you uh, navigate through anything that you have questions about. So the first thing we need to do is unpack your box. So when you pull all the product out of the box, you either probably received a single rack system or two rack system in the box. And you have a wheel system as well that uh, will be the sliding slider mechanism that goes onto the rack itself. So what you need to know, it came with zip ties if you got a two rack system. Um, and actually either way, single or two, uh, two rack system will come with zip ties on it. So those all got to be removed and uh, take the racks apart and get them ready for putting into the truck. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to cut all the zip ties off of here. So while you're cutting through the tape and removing all the foam, just be careful. Don't cut through it with uh, a lot of force. Make sure you're not cutting into the paint, scratching up your product. But you're going to need to remove all the foam. And then you'll have two bike rack components like that. So those will be separated. Okay, when you get your rack disassembled, you're going to find a couple of pieces on here that are going to have to be removed right away and we're going to reassemble them into the proper positions. They were put in the wrong position basically for packaging so that they wouldn't get damaged or bent in delivery. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take off the end caps on the back of the rail so you have some little parts that are squares just to protect the ends. We're going to take those off, set them to the side. Then you have your arms here. These both need to come off. There's two of them. So we'll just slide both of those off, set those to the side. Okay, and so you should have just the rack left over. Set that to the side. Next thing you're going to have to take off are the two position locking pins here. So pull those off. Set those over to the side. All right. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put on your lowering arm. So if you have a single rack, we set up all of the lowering arms to be on the driver's side of the truck. Um, if you have two racks, then we have one set up for the driver's side and one set up for the passenger side. Uh, the way you know which side it goes on is Here's both handles. Um, you can see that they're opposite of each other. So the driver's side will be pointing to the left, and obviously the passenger is pointing to the right. All right, so this particular bike rack, uh, we'll go ahead and set this one up for the driver's side. Okay, so we're going to slide this lowering arm on the side that has the holes drilled in it. Okay, we're going to slide that up. You're going to see that there's a hole that is drilled into the lowering arm right here. And there's also a hole that's drilled into the rack right here. Those two are going to have to align. And then we're going to put this pin right through the middle of that. Okay? So it looks like this. Kind of slide it around. And you got to find the position a little bit and then lock your pin over the top, and that's not gonna go anywhere, okay? All right, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to put on one of the wheel harnesses, the slider that adjusts for the different size wheels, different bikes. I'm gonna line those up. I need to pull the pop pin open so that this can slide over the rail. Okay, the pop pin's job is to go down and pop into these holes. Also, when you're going to put it on for the first time, it's going to get in the way of the bar, so it has to be released so you can get it over the top. 
once you slide it on, uh, there's a chance that these back plastic caps internally, they might interfere with the rail. They might kind of catch a corner. So kind of be careful with that. Make sure that you, you, know, you might have to kind of jiggle it around, put your finger in there and feel where it's at, and then get it aligned, then it'll slide right over. Once it's on, it's on, and it should be able to free slide. All right, so now that we're on with this, we're locked into the first hole position. I'm just going to pull this open, slide it up a little bit, and just lock it into a position so that I can get these back caps back on. Okay? So the back caps will then be reinserted onto the ends to kind of protect the paint and your truck. Okay? Is going to be mounting the closing arm to the top rail. All right, so all you have to do, you have a single bolt in there. We'll need to remove that and I'll show you how to install it. Okay, to go through any of the nuts and bolts on this bike rack, uh, you're going to need a, a wrench, uh, both a hex wrench and a regular uh, open wrench like that. So this would be, um, this particular wrench is an 11 millimeter. Uh, the two different sizes that you can use to adjust any of the bolts on here, you can either use an 11 millimeter, um, also a 7 sixteenths will work. So either one of those two sizes will adjust the bolts. Um, for all of these screws, you can either use a 5 seconds hex wrench, or you can use a 4 millimeter hex wrench. Whatever you have available, those should all do the job. All right, so in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and grab a 5 seconds US and I'm also going to grab the 7 sixteenths. So what you want to do is you want to pull this bolt out of the lowering arm up top here. Okay, so you'll notice that the bolt has two washers on it, and so you want to make sure to don't, don't lose those plastic washers or to help protect from scratching on all of your paint. So pull that bolt out. Now one thing you really want to notice is that one side is going to have a countersink and the other side does not. So the side with the countersink is made to accept the head of the screw. So that's going to allow it to go through deep enough to get plenty of threads on the other side. That's important because this is a critical joint for the whole bike rack. You don't want that to start coming loose. So we need enough threads on the other side to catch the nylon insert in the screw that kind of keeps it locked on so it doesn't want to back out. Okay, very simple. You basically take the rack there's an accepting hole right here. We're going to line those two up. We want to put the washer on one side, get the screw slightly started, and then push it through. And then we want to hold the washer on the other side. When you're holding the washer on the other side, you want to slide it in between, visually kind of line up the two holes. And then you should be able to just push that screw right on through. Sometimes you have to assist it, spin it through a little bit. Get that all to line up. And just kind of push it through. Just like that. Okay. And then go ahead and put your nut on the bolt. Alright, when you put the nut back on, you want to make sure and... I tend to kind of over tighten it just to get everything very well seated, seated in there and then back it off just a little bit because when it's over tightened the rack isn't going to move good. It's going to get kind of bound up but it's good to kind of tighten it down a little bit and then back it off just a little bit so that you have some free play in there for the movement. Right, and then check it. If it feels it feels pretty good. Nothing's wiggling around there. Um, very important thing about this rack system is that it's all everything kind of stays tight based on I have a, a nylon washers all throughout all of the all of the hinges. So those are going to allow the rack when you lift it, it's going to allow it to kind of stay up so that you don't have it falling down on your tire while you're trying to handle your bike with two hands and then you need a third hand to hold up this part. So that tension is important. If it does start to loosen up, you just need to go through and slightly tighten the bolts. Not a lot, but just a little bit until it holds itself up. Uh, may need a little bit of adjustment throughout the years. So that's about it. Um, 
now you have an arm assembled onto your rack. So at this point, your rack is assembled. So you've got the pieces put on and you're ready to put it into the truck. So for the rack on the right side, the only difference is the same procedure for assembling the arm except for instead of going on the side of the holes, we're going to put it on the side with no holes. So that would be considered the right side. Okay. So we'll slide that on. Okay, now we're going to put on the wheel assembly. It goes on exactly like the other side. You always want to kind of check and make sure you've snapped into a hole that is well locked into position. Put your end caps back on. Okay, and you're all set. So we're ready now to install the racks into the truck. Okay, so now we need to get to the crossbar. So your crossbar will look like this, and we have another safety pin here. This safety pin locks everything into position so that it can't slide in while it's installed into the truck. So first thing we need to do is we need to take out the safety pin. Okay, uh, the other thing we need to do is, this is probably one of the most important things that you need to know about installation of the crossbar. So the crossbar is built to hold bike racks and bike racks only. It's not made to support any tie downs or any other cargo. It's strictly part of the bike rack system and uh, would not be a good idea to use it to support anything else. So please don't do that. Uh, the very first thing you need to do is note that the end cap here rotates. That's going to expand out and expand in. It's got a, a bolt inside there that's threading in and out. So you need to thread that all the way in. Every time you install your rack, you need to thread that all the way in. Every time you take your rack out and go to reinstall it, thread it all the way in. You always want to start in that position. Uh, it's very critical that you do that because once you put it into your truck, uh, you're going to slide this mechanism out. That's going to slide this into the hole in the bed of your truck. You're going to lock this into position with a safety pin, and then this will be threaded out to put tension on your truck. If you do it in any other order, you're not going to get a proper installation, and it could be loose. So I'll show you how that's done. Before we start to install this portion of the rack into your truck, we first want to show you how to install it into the bike racks themselves. You'll notice on your bike rack that you have a cap on the left and the right side of the main tube on the bike rack. Uh, the cap on the right side has the tensioning lever. Um, the other side is just a round cap. So I would suggest that you install the bar from the side of the tensioning lever because it's the looser cap and it'll kind of straighten everything out and make it easier to slide through. So, what I'd like to show you, your bar, it has two sides. One side, as I showed you, is the threaded inside, and that's not removable. The other side has a removable cap. So you go ahead and just slide this cap off, and this will be the end that you'll install through your racks. I recommend that you install your racks, or that you slide the bar mechanism through like on the tailgate of your truck is a good place to position it. You can do it on the ground. I'm going to show it to you on the tailgate and then uh, show you how I kind of stage it and get it ready to go. So first you want to completely loosen up the lever. And I mean completely loosen it because it's, you can even just take it off, but you want that completely loose so that there's no tension. Otherwise you'll be fighting the tension the whole time you're trying to slide the rail through. And then lift it up. Slide the bar through. It may catch the other side, so kind of bounce it around a little bit, get it to go through. Once you got it through, it should slide real nice and easy. All right, there's your first rack installed. Oops, I installed it the wrong way. So we want this facing on the outside, so I have these two racks backwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back out. And then I'm gonna slide that one through. Next one, go ahead and slide it through, and just one at a time, you can slide them all through, 
and we recommend about four racks is the maximum that uh, is recommended. Uh, some people are experimenting with five racks and um, we'll see how that goes and let you know. Once you've got all that, you go ahead and put the end cap back on. Make sure you get it in there real good and snug and that it slides all the way on. I tend to like to tighten down my clamps here just so the bike racks are a little bit more stable. Yeah, they won't slide, rotate around on the bar quite as easily if you tighten these down. You don't really need to crank these down super tight. You just want them kind of like you'd do on your bicycle, uh, maybe even less than that. But just enough to get a little bit of bite on the bar so that they're not just sliding back and forth. That'll be good enough. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back into position in the truck and get around the other side of it. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to put uh, the, cap, the, the cap end that is not adjustable, that'll go into the truck bed first. So, let's go ahead and line that up with the hole, slide it into the truck bed. Okay, on the other side, I'm going to line it up with the hole on this side. So basically this whole system is mounting into the natural holes that are already put into your truck. If you don't have these holes, you can drill them. Um, you're going to need about a half inch size drill bit to drill that hole to clear the bolt. Okay. Um, this one we're going to just extend it out and we're going to put it into the hole. Alright, so this part of the process you can actually do from inside or outside of your truck. Um, and all you want to do is Look for the hole. So you have holes that are along the bar that you can slide in and out. You want to look for the hole that is, uh, you know, as tight as you can get it. So you make sure that the other side of the rack is pressed against the wall of your truck and fully inserted, that there's nothing loose. It's got to be completely installed on that side. And the pin should be going through the hole and the plastic cup should be seating firmly against the truck bed. On this side, same thing, make sure it's sitting firmly against the truck bed, pull it all the way out, and then just see if you can get it through a hole. So more than likely you're not going to have a perfect alignment of a hole. So if it's not aligning, then you need to slide the rail back in just a little bit to find the next hole. And you want to make sure that you get the farthest, uh, the farthest out possible with this slider. So don't skip a hole and make it real loose or you'll never be able to get it tight. So basically the rail is designed so that the holes, they're about a half inch apart and the pin is a little bit longer than that. So if you get further than a half inch, the pin won't be able to hold uh, into the truck deeply enough. So you need to make sure and get it to the furthest out hole possible. All right, so in this case, it's not going in. So I'm going to go ahead and slide it into the next hole. snap the pop pin, or actually snap the safety pin, safety lever over the top of the, top of the pin, and you're secure. And now you have a nice gap right here that you need to close because you had to slide this further in, and so then you start to rotate this piece out. If you don't get this to press firmly against the truck, it's probably because you can actually go further in on another hole. This is only designed to move us a little distance, just enough to get some pressure. So if it's not going to find, if you can't create pressure, screw this piece all the way back in again. It's worth taking your time to get this right, and you'll definitely want this to be a, a nice snug fit. So you'll rotate the, rotate the end cap all the way back in. And in this case, it's not in the right hole, so I'm going to try one more time to see if I can get it further out. So pull that out, slide it again, and yes, there was a, there was a bit, it would go into the next hole. So now, my gap is a lot smaller. So now I'm getting a good firm connection. Basically, I want to get this as finger tight as I can. Now, 
really the pressure that you're creating with this, that's just going to keep tension on this so that it doesn't start to uh, loosen up. But the pins going into the truck are really what are keeping it secure. So you would never want to rely on the pressure of this to hold the whole system in. You have to have the pins going into the truck. It's not built to work as a pressure fit system. Okay, um, <clears throat> also with that, never remove any of the pins or any of the parts from the rail. It's all there for a reason. Okay, we're going to go through the process of setting up one of these racks for a bicycle. So in this case we have a 29 inch wheel. Um, <clears throat> basically to save space in your truck bed we try to keep these as compact as possible. Um, in doing that, um, on a 29 inch wheel, you would probably want to remove these end caps back here so that you can access the furthest back position of the rack, okay, which would be right about there. And you can hear it snap in when it's in position. Okay. Now, don't worry, when you remove the end caps, the plastic back here should ride on the bed of your truck, but you might want to check it and make sure if you're worried about it potentially scratching your truck, make sure that that's what's happening and that you're not going to get scratches. It is possible to put a 29er in here if you put it in the next position up, but I prefer it back here because it keeps the wheel a little bit further away from the front of my truck, um, keeps it from pressing against the bar. So it just keeps everything a little bit nicer. It sets the wheel in a little better, but again, you can move it up into the next hole position and put the end caps back on if you'd prefer it like that. But that's the position you're going to need for a 29er. Okay, the next thing you need to do, uh, you're probably going to have to adjust the arm up here. Uh, rotating, rotating this a little bit <clears throat> into position so we'll figure out where that exactly needs to go once we get the bike in here. Um, just to get enough clearance to put the wheel in, sometimes you need to kind of preset this a little bit higher. The wheel might not fit between these two points. Um, so I'll just go ahead and set it into about a mid position. Probably have about two inches of, of thread showing here on the bolt, okay? And lift that all the way up and I'll show you how a bike goes in. All right. Just go ahead and put your wheel right on in there. All right, so what do you need to be thinking about when you put this in? Really not much, but there are um, there is one thing that's going to ensure that your bike is installed as securely as possible. You have three points of contact. You have the upper arm with the wheel chalk here. You have the lower wheel chalk, which is down here. And then you have your wheel, which is back here. When properly installed, all three of those points should be contacting the wheel. And so check it every time you put your bike in, just kind of look at it, make sure that that's what you've got. So in this case, the arm is not very tight. The wheel is pretty loose. So all I have to do, loosen that up and tighten the arm down a bit here. Okay. Now, when I go to clamp this arm down, I don't want to clamp it down so tight that I crush my wheel and my rim. This is a pretty strong bike rack. It is possible that you could damage it if you over tighten it. So, kind of check it. When you go to shut the arm, it should have a firm closure. It should be squishing the tire down. It's right up. It feels like I got it just about perfect there. Okay. Yeah, that feels pretty good. So, what I want to check then, is just kind of touch that bottom chalk. Yep, the tire is firmly against it. The tire is firmly against that one, and the tire is firmly against this wheel. Give your bike a little shake. Looks pretty, pretty well locked in. I think we're ready to go. All right, one thing you might notice when you put your bike in is that the rack might lift up on the, back, on the back here, up off the bed of the truck. So if you notice here, it's going to lift up just a bit. All right, so I can actually put my fingers underneath there. That's perfectly fine. That's just the bike rack locking up onto the wheel and that actually lets you know that everything is snugging up together. Um, kind of check your handle, make sure that it's locked into position. So the handle is going to naturally want to snap into position because of the way of the design of it. It's an over center lock. So as soon as it creates tension, it's going to snap itself into position and create a lock. 